Welcome to the TPC Desktop video series. In this video, you'll learn how to enter a simple lot traverse. We're starting with a blank desktop. Let's put the cursor over the task manager, and I'm going to choose Sample Surveys. This opens a folder of, of the sample surveys that ship with Traverse PC. I want to select one called Learn Import TRV, and I'll double click that to open it. Traverse PC opens the survey and displays whichever drawing was active when we closed it. You can see that this example is a three lot survey with some setbacks created. I've got the lot labels displayed here, but the um, point labels are just a little bit hard to read. So let's put the cursor over the Traverse Manager and select lots two, three, and four. I'm going to right click then and tell Traverse PC we want to change some Traverse settings. I'm going to go into the control points Tell Traverse PC I want the point labels to be just a little bit larger for our example here. Let's go ahead and add lot 5 to the north of lot 4 shown here. Let's open our Traverse Manager. I could come up to Tools and tell Traverse PC I want to insert a new Traverse at a particular location within the Manager. However, I'm going to close out that menu and just come down and double click a blank line. I do that a lot in the Managers to tell Traverse PC I just want to add another item in this case a Traverse, to the Manager. Traverse PC displays the new Traverse dialog box and let's go ahead and give Traverse PC some information about this new Traverse. We're going to call it Lot 5 and enter that as the name. I come down to the Format and I'm going to choose Deed with Curves. Let's choose a little ellipses right next to the list there and click on the Format tab. I can see that I've used the letters B for Bearing, H for Horizontal Distance, R for radius and so on to define the sequence of data that I want to show in that traverse. This is the format I want so I can choose OK. We do the same thing for settings. Here we've selected a setting called property lines. If we click on the ellipses once again and go into the settings we see that it controls things like the point symbol, the color, the line types, and the labels that will be used to draw this traverse. Finally we're going to make sure that the set tag option is chosen and we're going to choose OK. Traverse PC opens a Traverse view for our new Traverse Lot 5. If I look over at the drawing, I can see that the north property line of Lot 4 is between two points called 10 and 9. So let's recall point 10 into our Traverse. When we do, Traverse PC says that point 10 already exists and gives us a number of options. The first option, which is the default, is to recall the existing point in its coordinates. So I can simply press the Enter key again and I've recalled point 10 into the Traverse. Now let's recall point 9 the same way. Type 9 and let's press Enter twice and point 9 has been recalled into the Traverse. I want to talk a little bit here now about the uniqueness of the points and lines in Traverse PC. In Traverse PC there can only ever be one set of coordinates for point 10 and one set of coordinates for point 9. Those two points are unique. Also, the line between them is unique. There can only ever be one line between points 10 and 9. Traverse PC doesn't care if it's a curve or a spiral or in this case a tangent. The nice thing about that is that I never have the issue of hidden lines or hidden layers or a trimmed line on top of an untrimmed line. Those kind of CAD issues that I oftentimes run into in CAD programs, I never see that in Traverse PC. I'm always working with unique points and unique lines inside of Traverse PC. So by really recalling points 10 and 9, I'm now sharing that north lot line between lot 4 and lot 5. Traverse PC also lets me change the direction or the bearing of the line between 9 and 10. I may have created it in the direction of 9 to 10, but I just now recalled it in the opposite direction of 10 to 9. That's okay with Traverse PC. It understands what you're doing. Now I'm going to put the cursor up here by point 9 in the drawing, and we want to extend this east line of lot 4 up to the north. So let's come back to our Traverse view and let's left click the bearing column here for point 11 and we're going to use an equation to recall the bearing from 8 to 9. So let's type 8 dot dot 9 and press enter. 8 dot dot 9 is an equation that tells Traverse PC we want the bearing because that's the column we were in between points 8 and point 9. Let's type in a distance of 120 feet and I want you to notice over in the drawing view the Traverse PC has now drawn that Traverse course from 9 to 11 
This is an example of what Traverse PC calls synchronization between the views. So I entered the course from 9 to 11 in the Traverse view, and Traverse PC drew and labeled that line for me in the drawing view. We're going to talk about synchronization um, a number of times in this video today. Now let's extend the north line back to the west. So we'll press enter in the Traverse view until we've advanced to the next point. Again, let's use our bearing equation and type 9 dot dot 10 to reverse that bearing. And let's go 250 feet and watch again as Traverse PC draws that line for us. Now I'm going to put the cursor up here about where I would like to see Traverse PC uh, create the position of point 12. I want to extend this line westerly and I want it to intersect the west line of lot 4, which is an arc. We're going to do that with a Kogo intersect. So let's come up to the top on the obvious navigation toolbar and choose intersection. Traverse PC displays the Kogo intersection dialog box for us. We're going to use this dialog to create a new position for point 12 at the intersection that we're interested in. Let's start on the left hand side by typing point 11 which is the starting point that we wanted to, to use in our intersection. Notice that as I start to type the point label, Traverse BC displays all of the matching points that already exist in the survey. So it's easy for me to see that point 11 is an existing point already. And as I type, Traverse PC narrows my search for me. This is something we call predictive data entry. So watch now as I enter the second character for point 11. Now I just have one point that matches and I can press the enter key. I'm going to tab down to the bearing field now and remember how we used an equation to recall a bearing in the traverse view? Let's do the same thing here. Let's recall that north line of lot 4 because that's the direction we want to go by typing 9 dot dot 10 enter and traverse PC computes that bearing for us and brings it into the dialog. Now there's another way you can create the starting information using the drawing itself and I'd like to show that to you. Let's clear this dialog box. This time I'm going to use this small chevron to the right of the point label field. Once I click it, Traverse BC allows me to come over to the drawing and select either the label or the symbol for point 11 or the end point of a line that begins or ends at point 11. And when I click it, Traverse BC inserts it back into the Kogo dialog box for me. Let's do the same thing for the bear bearing. Again, I select the chevron. I come over to the line between 9 and 10 and notice in the drawing how Traverse BC highlights the line once I put the cursor over it. All I need to do is left click and Traverse BC is able to recall the bearing knowing which end of the line I was nearest it was able to compute the bearing in the direction that I wanted it. Now I'm going to come all the way to the right hand side of this dialog box and tell Traverse BC that the other part of my intersection is actually an existing line. In this case the arc between 7 and 10. So as soon as I select it, Traverse PC populates that part of the dialog for me, telling me that that arc actually exists between the closing point, 7 colon 1, and point 10. Now, I'm going to come down and click this box right here that says accept intersections beyond the endpoints of the line. And if we move the cursor back over here, we can see that the intersection we want is above the arc from 7 to 10. So I need to tell Traverse PC it's okay to look outside the endpoints of that arc for this intersection. Let's come back to our dialog box and we notice now that Traverse PC has computed two possible intersections and it's turned those fields from gray to white. This is exactly what we expect from a bearing distance intersect. The question now is which intersection should we choose? So let's click the view button and come back and click the drawing view. I'm going to move one of these labels out of the way and I can see that Traverse PC has computed both int1 and int2 and drawn them for me. I can tell by looking at this diagram that the point I want is int1, which is basically north of 7 colon 1. So let's come back to our dialog box, click the view button again to get back to our original drawing, and let's tell Traverse PC that we want to update the position of point 12 by entering that label in the number 1 field here. When I press enter, Traverse BC again displays the dialog that says, this point already exists. What would you like to do? The default option here is to update the existing point with the computed coordinates, which is exactly what I would like to have Traverse BC do for me. Now, before I press enter again, 
I want you to watch point 12 over in the drawing. Let's press enter now. Do you see how point 12 got updated automatically inside the drawing? Remember we talked a moment ago about view synchronization? The synchronization even works between the Kogo dialogues and the views. So point 12 got updated in the drawing automatically because it's synchronized with the intersect dialog box. We're going to leave the intersection dialog box open for just a moment, but let's come back out down to our traverse view and let's continue on by extending the traverse down to the next point and let's recall point 10 back into this traverse. Again, Traverse PC tells us that point exists and goes on to the next point. I'm just going to press the delete key and delete that last point. Now let's use the arrow keys or the mouse and go over to the radius column. I want you to notice up here in the Kogo intersection dialog box that when I recalled the curve from 7 to 10 or from 7 colon 1 to 10, Traverse PC told me that that curve or that arc had a 430 foot radius. I also could have determined that arc simply by putting the cursor over that arc in, the tra in this drawing view. So let's put the cursor over that arc. I'll hold the mouse steady there. And we can see that Traverse PC gives us the radius of 430 feet. The neat thing about Traverse PC is that the radius isn't stored for this curve in the drawing itself. The radius comes from the survey data where we created it back in Lot 4. And we're basically going to do the same thing for the new arc that we're creating in Lot 5. Let's come back to our Traverse view then, and let's enter minus 430. I love this about Traverse PC. I just entered the curve the wrong direction, but because the views are synchronized, I can see that it's the wrong direction in the drawing view. So I'm going to arrow over and just type in 430. Traverse PC updates that curve for me, and because it's synchronized with the view, updates the drawing for me as well. This is a good example of something that Traverse PC calls visible data. Traverse PC makes sure that all of your data is in front of you or accessible to you at all times. I never type in a radius like 430 only to have it disappear into the drawing somewhere. Traverse PC keeps that number in front of me in the Traverse itself and the drawing simply refers back to that survey information as needed to draw the curve. It's just one of the neat things that Traverse PC does. Now let's go ahead and close the intersection dialog box because we don't need that anymore. And I'm going to click on this button right here in the Traverse view that says open the closure view. Traverse PC displays the closure view which is a snapshot of the current condition of this particular Traverse lot 5. So I'm going to highlight for you an area here. It's computed the area for me. And because we started and stopped at the same point, my linear error is zero. What I want to show you real quickly here is that if I put the cursor over the Traverse Manager once again, I can come up to Lot 5 in the Traverse Manager and I see that same information displayed for me here. Again, that's because the views are synchronized. Traverse PC is displaying the same information, the area and the linear error of Lot 5 in both the Closure View and the Traverse Manager. So you're going to determine pretty quickly which views you like to use and where you like to access the data from. Let's go ahead and close the closure view now for lot 5. I'm going to come back to my drawing and real quickly I'm going to put the cursor over anything that's drawn by lot 4 and tell Traverse PC that I want to copy those Traverse settings to any other Traverse that I click on and I've done that. Now I have all the dimensions on lot 5 and I have the area and the lot label defined for me. This is a good example of what Traverse PC calls its quick view technology. Traverse PC takes my data, in this case the Traverse for lot 5, and draws it for me using the Traverse settings. Quick view technology takes all the busy work out of drawings by actually drawing the data for me. Now I'm going to open the Traverse Manager back up again. Here's the lot 5 Traverse that we just added. Traverses are great inside of Traverse PC, not just because they draw the, the lot for us in the uh, drawing, but what if we wanted to now create a legal description for this Traverse? Let's come to Tools, Legal Description Report, pick the options that we want, and choose OK. 
Traverse BC has just created a legal description for me in a built-in word processor, much like WordPad in Windows, and has put all the numbers in for me so that I can finish up my legal description quite easily and add it to another report or put it in the drawing if I want. Traverses are perfect for this kind of thing. Let's go ahead and, and close out the report view now for the legal description and let's close the Traverse view as well. Before I leave today, let's bring our task manager back up again just for a moment and come down to the Getting Started section and let's left click the Learning Guide. Traverse BC displays the Learning Guide for us as a PDF file and I'm going to come up and tell Traverse PC that I want to collapse all the top level bookmarks because I want to come down and show you that there's a chapter in the Learning Guide called Creating Traverses where you can learn to do what we just did in this video. There are many ways to create traverses as you might expect inside a Traverse PC and the great thing about the Learning Guide is that it takes you step by step through a number of these so that you can easily add traverses to your own surveys.